Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Survival Gear and today I'm going to teach you how to install a lit towel cap in a standard flashlight. Um, a few things that we'll need, of course, we'll run through that and then we'll run over how it works. Um, first of all, we'll start with uh, these towel caps I'm using are from Banggood. Um, you can make them yourself. Um, you can buy these boards from, is it Oshpak? Oshpok? Osh, Oshpak? Um, which uh, Pilot Dog, thanks mate, uh, he's the one that made the boards. Uh, then you pretty much populate the boards yourself. Um, if you've ever brought a light, like say something like an Eagle Eye X6, um, you pretty much you got to solder the actual button onto this board any, anyway. So um, there's only a few extra components that you need for this. Uh, one of them, I'll take this out actually. Everything I do is so damn slow. I think I'm just impatient with myself. So uh, you can see uh, it's focusing a lot better today than it did the other day. Uh, this is the second time recording this. Um, you can see there's two little resistors there uh, and two little LEDs. Uh, now that's pretty much if you were to build this yourself. Uh, I think this is version 2 or version 3 of, of the design. Um, you pretty much make it the same as what this is Any, anyway. These are only about 2 $3 US from uh, Banggood. Maybe a little bit more now. <clears throat> so it wasn't really worth it for me to go to um, Oshpak, Oshpak, I don't know what it's called, sorry guys. And then like buy all those boards and then I got to buy all the other components. I've got some um, resistors here anyway. Some um, 804, 805 re resistors. So they would fit on there I think. These might actually be the next size smaller. No, it's the same. Uh, so yeah. Um... So why do you want a lit towel cap on your torch? Well, you probably don't because it doesn't give you any kind of performance increases. Uh, it looks cool. It makes it look, I guess, like a little bit fancier. Um, it might be good to help find your light if you're in dark, I guess. Like it does have its uses. Uh, downside, it does use more battery. I don't think it plays with the current anyway, so that doesn't really matter if you're running a direct drive or whatnot. Um, if you don't set it up properly, it can play with the modes. So right now I can install this here and I'll show you that it will work. Um, this is a pretty important part where I should tell you what you need. So basically, um, that's already got a towel cap in there. Uh, I've already got a clear button on here because I like the clear ones better. Uh, so you need a clear button um, and you also need some of these nylon washers. Uh, the nylon washers will let through more light than what the steel ones do. Uh, let me just undo this and I'll show you that it does work. Um, that's a BLF A6 and that has an original BLF A6 driver in it. So, yeah. Uh, the A6 drivers need a little bit more work because you got to add your own resistor to let through uh, a little bit of current when the light's off. So it's called a bleeder, a bleeder resistor and um, you just got to add that and then that's pretty much all. Um... I know this switch on here is good because I've done it myself. You can see the dodgy soldering. Actually, let me see their soldering against mine. It's actually, mine's better. Huh. <laughs> um, yeah, ages ago, I actually fried this switch when I put too much heat into it. So I ended up buying some Ottoman switches. And Ottoman are meant to be probably the best switches that you can get, I think. Um, and I replaced most of my lights with Ottoman switches uh, on the tail cap. So, yeah. Um, I've already got spring bypass onto this one. Uh, these ones here from Banggood, they're double spring, so that should help let through extra current, but I'm still going to spring bypass it anyway. Um, so, I'll actually leave the steel washer in there, and I will install this, and we'll see if it works. I know it's going to work, but we'll just double check. I might fast forward this. No, I got it done straight away. Let's change. Dead. Alright, so you can see it's kind of glowing now. Um, even with that still washer in there, it still does glow. Uh, if you don't mind having, like, I think next memory mode. Uh, this is actually a pretty good option for you. So basically what I found with my A6 drivers at least is uh, It gets stuck on next memory mode. So 
If I turn it off now, it'll turn on the next highest mode. And then higher, and then higher, and then lower. So obviously that was probably direct drive there. So I went back down to low mode. Um, isn't too bad. But the other reason why you also want to put a resistor in is to um, make the light a little bit brighter. So yeah, um, you got to do this mod with uh, this driver, the A6 driver. Um, some mountain drivers, I guess you got to do the resistor mod with. Um, and I would also say what's called uh, Nang. You would have to do a similar mod. Um, if you got a driver, say like. Um, Texas Avengers, I think it's his drivers. Um, you don't need to do this mod because he's already got a blader resistor on there. And also a driver like the BLF X5, X6 drivers, they've already got blader resistors on there, so they don't need this mod done. Um, this is my uh, D-Domed uh, with an SMO reflector A6. So you can see it's got AR coated glass. We'll come stock with AR coated glass, but I'll put on my own one. Uh, uh, it's got an SMO reflector and it's D-Domed. It is a really yellow beam. Whoops, that's undoing the wrong part. We don't want to undo that. All right, so all we're going to do is you choose a resistor somewhere from in between. Um, it would be somewhere in between from 500 ohms to 800 ohms max. Um, depending on what kind of resistor that you use uh, depends on how bright uh, it'll be. So 800 ohms, the it won't glow as much, and 500 ohms, it'll glow a lot more than 800 ohms because it's letting through a little bit more current. Um, so basically, all we want to do is, you can do it a few ways. You can do it on the actual driver side if you want, but I'm going to do it on the battery side here. So greased up. Look at how much grease I left on it. Wowza. All right, so that's not out, but that's like here now. So um, basically, that's the uh, earth there. So that's like basically that's negative. That's neg negative. So you just want to bridge a resistor between positive and negative. Uh, these are drivers actually look different to the uh, drivers that they sell now. The A6 drivers that they sell now. So um, you'll choose your resistor. Um, I find I like mine with the 470 ohms. Uh, you can use any sort of resistor that you want, a SMD. Uh, you might need one bigger than the 804s to reach across, but you can always just bridge it with a bit of solder. Um, I'm using this kind. I think they're um, the metal ones, they're called or something. Um, basically, just because it's easier to fit across. And I've got like so many. I brought like these. And I've also got so many of uh, these ones too but they're a bit small for most applications. I need the next size up. Um, so I'll basically explain to you why you need it, if you need it, and whatnot. So now I'm gonna um, show you how to do it. Well, basically, most people already know how to solder, so you're just gonna solder it across here, and that's pretty much all you gotta do. You could probably actually get away with any soldering one side, um, I would say, if you wanted to. I don't see that there's a point, you might as well just solder them both, but you could probably fit one side under the um, under the retaining ring, and it'd be pretty easy. Um, I'm no expert at electronics, like I'm okay, and I know what I'm looking at most of the time, but um, uh, there might be other people that can probably do this better than me. I'm just going to bend mine like so, I think this side's still a little bit too much these are actually a very shaved down version of the new ones now cool or did i put that in there myself i don't even know i'm probably like breathing into this like heavily all right yeah this is probably the hardest part for me is because i got fat fingers and um, not very steady hands uh, it's a bit of a pain dealing with small electronics. I could probably leave this like um, con connected to the uh, thing. What am I saying? I could probably leave the um, retaining ring in. <laughs> I 
Nothing like some lead in your face in the morning. <clears throat> if you wanted to make this easy for yourself, just unsorter it from the LED. That's gonna be much easier than stuffing around like me. I could probably snip this a little bit more. Should I? Yeah, I should. Because I don't want it too much. Sorry guys, if you can't see properly. I think you kind of probably get the gist off it by now. Like what you just got to do. It's pretty simple. I kind of want to hold this down. Eh. Sometimes I need hands like an octopus. And my cord for the soldering iron is kind of tangled. That simple. Um, you probably could make that bo a bulge a little bit flatter, but yeah, if, if if it locks down, I'm gonna keep it like that. I'll try and lock it down and see if it goes flat. It should flatten itself out. You'll see no spring bypasses on the front of this one because um, I don't know. I never actually. This is more of a show light for me because I polish it up. I actually use it quite a bit, but um, it doesn't get any fishing use or nothing, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to put the lit tail cap in there. Well, not really, but I'll be back in a jiffy. Alright guys, so as promised, I said if it didn't work, I'd flatten it out, and you can see I had to flatten it out quite a bit. Um, it's not connected the best, but it's still fairly strong on there. This whole light is fairly dodgy anyway, so yeah. Um, it's still on there pretty good now. The driver isn't actually hitting the best there. It's alright. Um, now, I haven't even changed out the washer yet. Um, in this, so, we'll connect it back together like so. So, I polished this, and I don't know if I ever made a video on it. Why is this not connecting the right way? It's not connecting the whole way up, is it? I think I've got the tube the wrong way around, probably knowing me. It'll still work anyway because I just won't fit properly. No, actually, I don't. I don't think I'll have the retaining ring down enough. It's supposed to be. No short end goes this side. I think the retaining ring has to be down a little bit more because there's that gap there. That's okay. I'll just show you guys quickly and I'll have a look at it in a sec. Alright, so now even without the uh, see-through washers in there, you can see how much brighter that it is. So that's with the stainless steel washers, uh, washer still. Uh, I don't know if it's stainless steel or steel or whatnot, but you know, you know what I mean, one of these style washers. Dusty washers. Alright, so also it got rid of that problem of the next map of the next memory, so it's on low. And then now it's on reverse, but you get the idea that it's not going to next memory mode. I can stop that just by long clicking. Now it's on reverse mode, so still a pain. Um also if you put too low of a resistor value, it can actually make it not worse, but it kind of makes it like um doing what it's doing now um mine i just got to go in and configure and that'll make it better and one more thing before we go i'll put in the c3 washers and i'll show you what it looks like properly and then i'm going to enjoy putting on some spring bypasses on this light without you guys watching me all right uh what size are these i think these are the right ones m10 uh, 16 by 1. So mine are too thin, so I'm gonna need a couple. But they'll still work. So you can see they're the same size. Um, we kind of want to get the same thickness. So I reckon two should be thick enough. Yeah, that'll work. It's probably not gonna be quite as rigid. Uh, you could glue these together if you can't find the right ones that are the right thickness. Uh, it's only there just to make it a little bit, bit, bit more rigid. 
performance anxiety. <laughs> We've all been there, don't lie. Performance anxiety issues. Oh, man. <laughs> I kind of find that working on lights now is kind of... Um, for, for me, it's, I realize working on electronics, you kind of got to take your time and like, you're not getting paid for it anyway. You're just doing it for fun. So, um, yeah. Um, so I always try and take my time, but because like, I don't want the video to run for 45 minutes. So that's how it looks now. So you can see it's very, very bright. So now it's focusing. Now we'll put it all back together. I actually think that this is how the uh, A6 sits, it doesn't sit that close, because I've got a lot of dirt in there. But I'll take out the driver retaining ring and try and get it down more. So yeah, so um, that's how you install a lit tail cap. Uh, some drivers will need that resistor mod, the resistor mod isn't hard either way. Um, it's a fairly simple mod, it kind of makes the light, I guess it makes it look better. Um, I've got to polish this up again. And also, for some reason, ever since I brought mine, I've had that mark there. I might try and sand that down, but it's black underneath, so I don't know if I want to. So, yeah. Um, let me actually turn the light off, and you guys can see. That's how it looks. Very, very bright, actually. Um, you could use a resistor that is a little bit less. Um... You could use a resistor that doesn't have that value, a little bit less value if you didn't want it quite as bright, because that is fairly bright. But yeah, it makes it easier to find in the daytime. Also, one more thing, um, I have the original, I think this was from my X6 and I replaced it when I got these new ones. But um, this driver doesn't actually have two LEDs, it's only got one. So just be careful uh, which, if your driver has one or two. Um, with one it still works fine, it just won't be as bright, so you might have to put the resistor value up or down a bit more, just to make it better. Alright guys, this has been Chris from Everyday Survival Gear, I'm uh, bringing you how to install a, uh, <laughs> a lit tail cap. Uh, as always, uh, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching guys. Alright guys, um, I ended up doing spring bypasses on the back and front, no point in you guys watching anyway, because I've already got a video on that. Uh, here we go. Back and front. I used it. I used. I used it. I used um, braided solder. Uh, yeah, usually I would use like 20, 22 gauge wire, but uh, it's pretty tight spaces in there, so I just went with the braided solder on the inside. Cool.